Okay, uh, aloha, um, and thank you for your attention today. Um, I'm happy to be here on behalf of the Maui Nui Seabird Recovery Project. Um, I'm presenting on data collected by our staff and our many, many volunteers, and also um, DLNR and DOFA staff before us. So, um, Ua Ukani have a widespread distribution. They live in the tropical Pacific and Indian Oceans, nesting primarily on islands. Um, <clears throat> because of their feeding habits, they have been uh, indicators, uh, both historically and contemporarily, for, um, fishery for fisheries, so they're used to indicate schools of uh, predatory fish. And uh, more recently, so contemporarily, they are used as indicators of um, marine debris and, and ocean plastic, so they're showing up in the literature for that reason as well. Um, there are an estimated 300,000 pairs of Oa'akani in Hawaii. The majority are in the northwestern Hawaiian islands, followed by Oahu and Ni'ihau. In the high islands, the greatest densities of Oa'akani are on the offshore islets because it is there that they are free from development and from introduced predators. Um, <clears throat> in Maui Nui, which is shown here on the map, uh, the Orange and yellow dots are the currently active colonies. Um, we band at the, where the indicated the dots are orange. So I'm gonna kind of go through these by name because I'll be talking about them throughout the talk. So up on the north shore of Molokai is Mo'omomi. Um, Havea is the colony on the west shore of Maui. Ho'okipa is on the north shore. Kamaole 3 Beach Park is on the south shore. And then our islet uh, Molokini there. Um, the pink Spots on this map indicate historical colonies, um, and they are potential future sites also for Oaukani if um, through habitat restoration and um, predator exclusion. So this, oops. So um, this is a closer look at the Maui Nui colonies and the most recent uh, result of our uh, borough count surveys. Uh, so these maps are all to scale, and it shows the variability in size and density among these colonies. Havea and Moomomi uh, have expanded, been expanding over the years. There's been um, a degree of predator control implemented in these colonies, and uh, they're also less restricted by development. So Kamaole 3 and Hokipa are our smallest of the four. Okay, so the banding methods that are used for this study are, are pretty standard. For colony banding, the burrows are located and the birds are extracted by a grabber, shown here, demonstrated beautifully by our, one of our great um, grabbers, Bill. And uh, then the train bander applies the band and data are collected. So we usually do this in teams of two or more. Um, we try to keep the, the banding effort consistent, so it takes about two or two and a half hours to work through the smaller colonies, so we cap banding effort at the larger colonies about that same time period. Chick, take, chick banding takes place in, before fledging in October, and uh, the adult recapture and banding takes place in April, after sunset as the birds are returning to their burrows. Okay, so um, after compiling all these data, I had 19,200 banding records, but this is a summary of the colony banding data that I used for the analyses. So there's consistent chick banding data from 2004, and also adult recapture and banding data from 2009 for the colonies shown with the black stars there. Um, for Molokini, we only have chick banding data, and we have it from 2004. This is because we don't go back to the islet after dark um, for safety reasons, so we don't do adult recaptures there. Um, since the Lanai'i colony data are only between the years of 2005 to 2012, I um, removed them from the analyses. Okay, another subset of banding data that we have comes from fallout birds. So um, like many seabirds, the Uwa'u Kani are easily distracted by anthropogenic light and they fall out at night um, in urban areas. Uh, at MNSRP, we respond to follow birds. We collect them and um, evaluate them and ban them and release them if they're uninjured. So we have banding data from fallout birds from as early as 1996. Um, this map, though, just shows kind of the distribution of fallout um, occurrences since 2009. Um, this data set is not as rigorous as the colony banding <coughs> data set because we 
depend on community effort. We, you know, we need people to call us and let us know if they find a bird, and also there are environmental variations throughout the years. Um, but you can see, like, on the map here, so there are areas of higher density, and we have a lot of established contacts that know to call us when they see a bird, mainly resorts and hotels on the seashore. Okay, so this is just a summary of the fallout banding data that I ended up using. So you can see there's a lot of variation annually, but it averages about 50 or so um, birds per season. Okay, so looking through all of these data, I identified three main pathways that would be the best for describing the population. First, chick banding data could be used to calculate the probability that a chick is recaptured in its home colony, and also we could look at the movement among colonies. Um, adult banding data could be used to estimate um, survivorship, but also determine recapture rates. And fallout data could provide a look at how likely it is that a chick from any given colony would fall out, um, but also could be used to, um, or to determine how the fallout recovery effort is um, affecting this population. Okay, so looking at the chick banding data, um, the, the bars simply show the total number of chicks banded at the colonies over time. Um, Molokini is the, shown in the purple bars, and I didn't use any of the Molokini data for, data for trend analysis because the banding effort on Molokini is more determined on how long we get to stay on the islet. So sometimes we would be there for five hours and sometimes just like 45 minutes. So. But looking at the other colonies where the effort is more standardized, there is um, not so, there's a sort of a static trend over the years for the smaller colonies, whereas um, Havea and uh, Momomi show this increase in growth over time, which uh, we do see also reflected in our borough counts. So um, this pattern also influences the rest of the, the um, banding data results. So, more chick banding results. The tables here show the, the individual colonies. Um, average years, average number of years to recapture, so how many years until we see the chicks return to the colony is between seven or eight years for all of the colonies. Um, knowing that Ualkani reached sexual maturity at about five years, and five years is in fact the earliest that we did recapture banded chicks. Um, this kind of tells us that we are timing our uh, adult recapture event to match up with experienced breeding birds as inexperienced birds may turn up later in the season. Um, also, uh, the percent of birds recaptured in their home colony was around 10% for the smaller colonies and between 5 and 8% for the growing colonies. And this is expected as the sample proportion will um, decrease as these colonies grow. So looking at bird movement, we predicted that smaller colonies like the islet which are and, the, and the islet, which are limited for space, um, would have high emigration rates. And uh, we expected that these um, birds would be moving to the expanding colonies. And we do see that Molokini has a high proportion of emigrants. And uh, we see that Havea also gains a lot of these birds that are moving. However, um, proximity is actually a, a big factor here because these birds, a, a huge proportion of these birds that are leaving the islet are actually going to Kama Ole 3, which is also a small colony, but it's right next door. Okay, so for the adult um, banding data, I used the program MARC to analyze and, uh, the adult banding and recapture data. Mark estimates the survival and recapture probabilities for a given population, and it allows for the comparison of models under different assumptions, mainly that the um, probabilities for survival and recapture are or are not dependent on group or time or an interaction. Um, for this system, the time period was one year, because that's the time between banding events, and the groups were the individual colonies. So running through possible iterations, I was able to look at the results and determine the best fitting model for the system. Um, the AIC just tells the parsimony of the model and the deviance is an estimation of the error. So um, according to this, the best fit model here says that um, our system, within our system, the um, probability for survival ship is static, but the recapture is dependent on both group and time. So using that best fit model and the values calculated by Mark, um, the left hand graph there shows the probability of survival ship, which is about 88% for um, all of the colonies. And um, this is pretty similar to um, other uh, closely related species. And on the right, you can see how the probability of recapture is not constant, so there's that 
time interaction, and this is probably actually an artifact of, our, of, of sampling, so, um, but even still, the averages for the colonies for the probability of recapture are highest in our small static colonies. Okay, finally, I just wanted to talk briefly about what I found looking at the banding data from the fallout birds. So first, looking holistically at the chick banding data, there's no relationship between the number of chicks that were banded in a colony for any given year and then the number of them that were recovered that year at fallout. Um, so the differences among, that we see among the colonies seem to be um, more dependent on uh, the proximity of that colony to lit areas, to, the, to our urban areas. So um, in the left hand, oops. <coughs> In the left-hand column here is the percentage of chicks that were banded at the colony that were recovered as fallout. And then uh, on the right is the, um, how much they deviate from what we would expect to see just based on numbers alone. So in Kamaole and Havea, which are close to these resort areas, we have higher than expected. And then in Molokini and Moomomi, which are more remote, we have fewer than expected. I also um, looked in our records for birds that we um, banded as fallout birds, but then turned up in our colonies later on at a banding event. And this is actually one of the most exciting parts of the study because it shows us that all of this recovery effort we've been putting in over the years, capturing fallout or capturing and releasing fallout birds is um, beneficial to the, uh, this population. Um, so, First, we have hatchier birds that were recaptured um, about five to 12 years after they were banded as fallout. Um, and these birds usually showed up in colonies that were close to the areas where they fell out. So um, in Holkipa, we found birds from Kahului and on the south shore in Kamaole 3 and then on the west shore over at Havea. And then um, we also had after hatchier birds, which showed up in the colonies one to five years after banding. And these birds came from more widespread locations so we had birds that fell out on the east shore showing up on both the west and south shores and then birds from all over actually turning up at the colony at Moomomi. Okay. okay, so uh, to summarize, birds return primarily to their home colony as early as five years, but on average seven or eight years later to breed. Um, a large proportion of birds move from the islet um, as expected, and a large number of emigrating birds um, end up in our growing, expanding colonies. Um, however, the data also suggests that um, nest fidelity is strong, and the birds tend to, when they're not going home, they go as closely as, as they're as close as they can. Um, adult survivorship at 88% uh, doesn't vary, but recapture probability does vary um, due to colony growth. And the main point from all of these results is that colony protection and management, as well as mitigation of fallout, um, are critical for Uaukani in Hawaii. Um, at MNSRP, we are advocating for restoration and um, habitat restoration and predator exclusion, exclu uh, exclusion at sites across Maui Nui. And uh, this would help the, these Uaukani colonies, as well as birds that will be extirpated from their sites on the northwestern Hawaiian Islands as they are lost due to sea level rise. And uh, I want to finish with a big thank you for, um, to all of the literally hundreds of people that have helped with these banding efforts over the years. So all of our grabbers and data collectors and uh, Ukani ambassadors that we have had. Um, this is a very um, beloved event on, on Maui and we have volunteers that have been coming back year after year and they also spread the word and we get new people every year and everybody really enjoys being a part of it and we love being able to you know, share about this, this um, organism and about its connections to the ecosystem and then have people understand their connections to their native uh, ecosystem. So this is a really wonderful event and I'm always happy to be a part of it. And if anybody is on Maui in April or October and is interested in coming and joining, please talk to one of us, we'd be happy to have you. So, well, thanks.